Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, <clears throat> and I uh, wanted to start us off with something good from uh, Bank XRP. For those of you that don't follow Bank XRP, at Bank XRP, he's one of the old school people in the XRP Twitter community, and he puts out a lot of good information. And so every once in a while I try to uh, cover some of his tweets because they're really worth looking at. This one is um, it's about FAFT, F-A-F-T. FAFT calls on its 35 member countries to implement regulations on crypto by June, prevent crypto from being misused for unlawful transactions. Um, now here it's called the FATF, but here it's FAFT. I'm, I'll see if I can figure out which one that is. Um, it includes Aust Argentina, Australia, Austria, Canada, US, UK, France, China, Russia, and Switzerland, among other countries. And he's got a little video here about it. Then he says, um, uh, here's FATF. Yeah, it's FATF. 38 members of FATF. The FATF currently comprises 36 member jurisdictions and two regional organizations representing most major financial centers in all parts of the globe. He's got documentation there. And then he's got something interesting here. Ripple's Ryan G Zagone at FATF. This is where Ryan Zagone, this is a tweet where Ryan Zagone was talking about how he was honored to, for, to um, be able to speak there and so you can kind of see how this all everything comes around this it's just one more financial rock that ripple is right there under and so uh just one more one more thing folks but you're seeing re these countries are all wanting to get on the same page with this regulation so that um they because they know what's coming all right and then I'm going to try to, I got a bunch of windows here. So I'm going to, and, and this is my third video of the day. And so sometimes things try to slow down on me when I'm, when I'm, uh, that far into it. That's what, it, what I've noticed is once this computer gets humming <laughs> for, <laughs> and I get to my third video, a lot of times things slow down a bit. Got this from the digital asset conductor at asset conductor. I like his name, by the way. Um, and he sent me this. This is an AMB crypto article. Let's see if, uh, well, come on. Here we go. Um, it's going to speed up as these windows go now. But part of the reason you love this channel is because of my slow computer. You know, somebody told me the other day, I, I was talking about how people are telling me I need to get a new microphone and my, my, get a new computer and this and that. And their lat one person made a funny comment. It, they said, "They said, well, that's part of of what makes your channel good is the the fact that you you have all these human problems going on that are um, normal problems." And so, anyway, see, look at this. Now I've got this website that's trying to uh, wait. Uh, let's see. All right. So anyway, this AMB Crypto article. Let me see if I can hit the refresh button and get it to come up. This is an AMB uh, crypto article, and it's about a company. I'll just start talking about it till it does come up. It's about a company called BitLeaks, Bit B I T L E E X, and what it was about is they. I think they called it a trust platform that they are going to have. Where here, here we go. Um, it emerges as the world's first cryptocurrency trading platform with a tr with trust management, and the way I read this is that you will be able to go onto this platform and you will be able to turn over your digital asset trading to professional traders and let them manage your portfolio. That's the way I understood this. And so that's just more progression of this industry is the way I see it, is that it, it kind of shows you how everything is, is beginning to move forward and, and this is just another example of some of the other products and services that will be available as this industry c continues to evolve. You know, I can remember, what's interesting is I can remember back in 2013, I think as I recall in the United States, we had maybe two or three different um, 
places that we could even go to trade digital assets. And one or two of those ended up being crooked. <laughs> so, I mean, we've come a long way. All right. Now this is from, for love, from love for crypto. Now, if you don't follow him, he's a definite at love for crypto 17. He also has a YouTube channel, love for crypto. This guy's really smart. Um, and he says the ultimate trigger for the upcoming economic crisis, brace yourself. If this isn't smoke and mirrors, BS, cover up and hold on any truth, then sit the back and enjoy the show because it will get nasty. Now I, I, I should say, you, with um, love for crypto, he's kind of like Galgatron. His language can be a little colorful. So I warn you all to put your big boy and big girl pants on. You have to put them on for Galgatron and for love for crypto because they're very smart people. But they like to have some colorful language in it. We need people like that in this space. <laughs> we need everybody. We need people with uh, all kinds of different backgrounds and, and different styles. And so... I love it, but at the same time, I don't want to offend anybody, but I, I have to send you to, to some of these smart guys like this because they what they have to say, it gives you some really good insight, and love for crypto is one of them. We well, tweeted this out, zero at Zero Hedge, China is discussing the possibility of dumping U.S. treasuries. Well, this has been a theme on my channel and love for crypto's channel, and I wanted to show you also this. This is from the Drudge report and it, it's got that same headline uh, China strikes back tariff hikes dump treasuries will never surrender stocks shook I'm looking at CNBC while I'm talking to you the Dow plunges 600 plus points folks now I've talked about this a lot on this channel folks I've, I've talked a lot about the financial crisis and how it relates to digital assets I've told you that digital assets were born Bitcoin, it's literally written in the Bitcoin code about the financial crisis. It came out right there during the financial crisis when they were doing those bailouts. And I've told you that the U.S., as well as many other countries, their country's economies are built on a debt Ponzi scheme. It, it has, it, the, the stock market in the United States that has run up for the last 10 years has been a complete facade. And that's one of the core reasons that I've been telling people I invest in dig digital assets. Now, I want to make another point. During the financial crisis in 2008 or whatever, one of the biggest problems, and this has been talked about too, the biggest problem that they had was liquidity. In fact, about 10 minutes ago, I was watching CNBC and they started talking about liquidity and how that was what it was important. Um, then I saw this from at Jesus XRP. Someone said liquidity. Th then Zero Hedge had tweeted out this chart. Okay. And this is a tweet from, let me see. It's a tweet from today. Liquidity has collapsed. Okay. Now this reminded me of something else that, that we've talked about on this channel. I talked about this article. This is from October of 2018, I believe. When it comes up, I'll confirm that. But this is Chris Larson. Digital assets like XRP can help prevent the next financial crisis. Ripple co-founder Chris Larson from Octo October 26, 2018. He was at the Money 2020 conference in Las Vegas. And he described how crypto could prevent trillions of capital from being tied up. Ten years out from the financial crisis, we still don't have the infrastructure, perhaps, to prevent the next one. And I think this is where digital assets can really help. Because an efficient digital asset can really solve some of the key problems in global liquidity. The, the world's got trillions and trillions of dollars tied up in liquidity just to get around how clunky the movement of value is around the world with a really efficient digital asset, something like XRP. And that's what we believe will be the most efficient. You can now reduce trillions and trillions in capital from being tied up. So you can make those transfers instantly as a bank or as a payment provider or enterprise without having to have money pre-positioned all over the world. Now, after that, I want to show you something else. This is from one of the smartest guys I've seen on Twitter as well. His name is J.C. Collins. He has a website. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Philosophyofmetrics.com. He talks about geopolitics and the financial system. He's a very smart guy. He's got a lot of articles that are, that are about Ripple and XRP also. 
He says, value rushing out of the old system and into the new system. Bingo. This will take an extended period of time, though. This is just the beginning. And he's tweeting, tweeting Radiogenics uh, tweet. So where is some of this EM outflow heading? The answer, crypto, seems like a reasonable conclusion. As EMFX currencies are at risk of rising CB rate ri cut risk and destabilizing currency outflows. So, I mean, folks, this is getting really interesting. Now, let's go back to this. And then I wanted to cover what Sergeant Obi Wan um, has tweeted to me. Thousands of U.S. banks now fiat to crypto gateways for Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and more, says crypto platform Abra. I'm not going to go further into the article, but I, that, I think that kind of speaks for itself. And then next, I got this from Sean Michael at Michael's underscore Mister. This was uh, talk about being good timing. This is a tweet from Backed today. Now, for those of you that don't know, Backed is the crypto exchange that is going to bring traditional finance to crypto. They're, back, they're owned by ICE, which is the New York Stock Exchange's owner. This is where I believe that all of the major players like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley are going to initially be running all of their clients through. Today, we're pleased to update you on the launch of Bitcoin futures contracts developed by Backed in collabor collaboration with ICE Futures US and ICE Clear, in U U Clear US. I went to this article and read it, but uh, it was a bunch of, I, I didn't get too much out of it other than I think that they're, they're, they're going to be opening somewhere between June and July from what I can tell. I've been seeing different tweets. Here's one from... Um, Barry Silbert, where he tweeted out their tweet, and he says July. So he read into it that they're going to launch in July. I've also seen June, but it's it really, truly, in the scheme of things, it doesn't matter, folks. June, July, whatever, it is going to be. It is a game changer, and I think that the market is already prepping for the game changer. All right, next from Crypto Utility Guy. This also speaks for itself. Germany rushing to pass a crypto bill to tokenize bonds. Has anyone told you that they were going to tokenize the world? I believe we've told you here. Okay. And also, I got this also from the crypto utility guy. At Utility Guy 7 sent me this article right here. Dubai Bitcoin Exchange Bit Oasis wins preliminary license in the Middle East first. Um, this is their tweet. But what I wanted to show you is... This currently some of the cryptocurrencies that are available for trading on BitOasis include Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and I think we'll end it there. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you realize they do trade XRP. Okay, and next Forbes Crypto. I saw this Starbucks, Nordstrom, and Whole Foods now accept Bitcoin. Just don't ask them. I'm not going into the article, but it does kind of. I think you kind of get it. They'll be accepting XRP before it's over. And then C3 Nick, some funny satire I saw <laughs> breaking. The USA is thinking about import tariffs on Bitcoin's mind in China. <laughs> I got a good laugh out of that. And next, um, crypto utility guy who is on fire at utility guy seven. I saw this graphic right here and it just made me laugh out loud today. And so I thought that maybe we needed to show you this. <laughs> I may, I may. Uh, take that and turn it into my, uh, put an XRP on him and turn it into my thumbnail. We'll see. And next, I wanted to show you the market and what has happened. Uh, let's see how what we've got in market cap now. I'm refreshing this. We've got $228 billion in this market, folks. And we've, I mean, we've come 20 or $30 billion. We've increased 20 or $30 billion in the last few days. I mean, and think about this for a minute, folks. And this is what I'll close on. Um, you can see our 24-hour returns here, seven-day. You can see XRP is coming on now. Um, but the overall point is, think about this, folks. The whole world is coming to crypto, and there is only $228 billion. You've got a, you, you probably have a good feeling today because the market's been going up. But $228 billion is nothing in the scheme of things in terms of what is about to the, the money that is about to come into all of this. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family 
that $228 billion is nothing in terms of what is coming to crypto. Thank you for listening.